Hello, welcome back to the Spearhead campaign. That was a very German intro. Um, we are about to storm the Cologne Cathedral. I'm bringing up my reverse platoon. And over here we are still have to clear the southern approach. And yeah, let's just take it from here. In reality, the um, cathedral is kind of on a raised platform. Which isn't really reflected here. Apparently there's still some stuff going on here. My big position is now uh, this um, ministry or whatever it was here. This is the objective area. Don't know how many are still alive in there. Oh, yikes. How do I get a tank to shoot at that? No, it's that one. Oh, shit. Well, I had some close combat here. Oh, he's surrendering. Even the regulars are throwing their heads up. That's good. And more firing coming from here. This is a bit risky. But I want to silence that machine gun quickly. Not that one. We took fire from that one as well. Contact. Another MG out there. Okay, that is uh, the next target for the tank. Alright, good news. Go, go, go. You guys have been chosen to storm the cathedral. Good luck. I think some will enter through here, and the other at the, uh, others at the same time through here. After that I want to get my uh, regimental HQ into the tower just to spot a bit. In the very, very low towers. Okay, these are giving up. Oh, we lost one guy while crossing the street. Alright, these guys will hold the outside for now. We took fire from uh, this direction here, but um, for these guys to rush over and get them from behind. Although that's apparently not even necessary. And uh, this, uh, these guys uh, will go to the go, go, go. first door. Did you see that? 
I did not receive any fire from in there, to be honest. And usually if we are this close, even a forward observer might actually uh, open up on us. These guys are still up, huh? Got him. Okay. <laughs> and... First of all, we should be able to look into these two now. There's no fire coming out. Oh! Somebody's shooting. Oh, what the fuck? Okay, so there's one guy in the... Uh, where the altar is, I guess? Yeah, that guy might actually be hard to get out of there. I well, would we'll have to go through here. I don't want to blow it up, obviously. Okay, five second delay and then Rainbow Six. Move it! Go, go, go! Move it! Go, go, go! Come on, go, go, go! Oh! Got a casualty. Still a guy with the pistol, probably the Parkstone Commander, if I had to get. This guy is still up. I told these guys to storm into here, but for some reason these doors don't seem to be working, which is annoying. Okay, these guys are going up the... Um, what's it called? The tower. Jesus Christ. Could be a bit higher, to be honest, but okay. Okay, so we will have to see, maybe... No, from here I also can't get into there, so... Um, seems buggy. Maybe I will have to use the other tower, maybe that works, but I don't see why that would work. Uh, these guys are going up. Your eyes open. It's not even all that high, which is annoying, uh, because I'm not even sure we will be able to see that much from here. Are you kidding me? These guys have stood up? Schnell! Amazing. Secure the flanks. Okay. Let's get some noise discipline here. Okay, you also can't enter from that tower, I guess. Okay, in that case, I uh, will have to try this door. Weird. Okay, these guys uh, arrived up here. They're looking in the wrong direction, though. I kind of want to look in this direction. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say that. I did spot a um, uh, SPW here. Don't know what it's doing there, but I just called an artillery on there. Because, frankly, I don't know what else to do with my artillery at this point. Okay, so the last thing we have to secure is uh, this ramp.
All right, that one works. I'm gonna storm that last thing. If there's uh, indeed somebody still in there from two directions. Secure the flanks. No fire. Okay, stack up. There's at least one guy with an assault rifle in there. Listen up. Yeah, be quiet, rather. Okay, let's go. Surprise, bitches. Can we see him? Ah, got him. Okay. I think with that, uh, the cathedral is ours. Our um, regimental HQ with the radio. It's already going up here, probably going to be out of breath soon. And uh, yeah, now these guys will do the assault on the bridge. Let's get ready for the last assault. Regimental HQ is up here. My spotting rounds are coming in. Now we do spot uh, already some enemy behind this, uh, including the crew of the Panther, but there might be more. Um, so yeah, it would be good to line my infantry up here, and the tanks of course as well. fire so far. Come on, go, go, go. Probably as soon as we crest this um, dike here it will be all hell breaking loose. Oh interesting. Didn't even notice that. Fogstorm mortar. I guess these were taken out by the preparatory bombardment. Over here there are still people hiding out uh, in this objective area. Better could have gone worse. Testing this is kind of um, nerve-wracking. 
So we are being careful, we have things in support. I don't want to drive the tanks over because that would expose them to God knows how many uh, Panzerfaust potentially from the buildings. So these guys will have to uh, stick their head uh, over. So there's the uh, Panzer crew, yeah, they're shooting with their pistols. Okay, they got Thompson. But other than that, not all hell broke loose. Now there's more um, tank crews here. Oh, that's good, that's close to the Hanumark. That might actually be the. Um, over. Yeah. There's one uh, area here where tanks can cross. Roger, perfect. Got him. Uh, something there apparently. Maybe the rest of the crew. Still infantry here as well, but now they're fleeing. End of Out. Okay, first thing going over is of course the Pershing. There's another um, guy here, which is a hard shot to make with a tank, to be honest, with a bridge in the way. Still in there. Oh, he's clever. That is a really annoying angle, to be honest. I think one of the tanks saw them. No, oh, they hit one. Trying to flank that position. Now this is a bit risky because there might be Panzerfaust guys here. But I kind of want to get this over with because I have all the objectives and as soon as I take out these guys or drive them off I will uh, cease fire and end the campaign. Oh yeah, we got one of them as well. No. Uh, tracks are a bit damaged from that. And there it is for the Rhine. Okay. Spotted. 
surprised they just don't want to give up huh? Okay, I'm gonna run one more um, round. Uh, well, let's see if they surrender. And uh, then I think I will see fire. It seems like these are wiped out finally. Alright, they did not surrender, so I am going to see fire because I have this objective, I have this objective. This has no Germans in it, this has no Germans in it, this probably has no Germans in it. And there's no others, except, I guess, killing tanks. Now, there might be tanks hiding here, I guess. But I don't want to go in there. Even though we do have some time left on the clock, I think this will be the win. See fire? Yes. Tactical victory. Oh, only tactical, okay. Let's see. Um, we got that. Failed. German armor. Okay, so they still had tanks in there. And we didn't inflict enough casualties. Fair enough. Um... Yeah, they lost everything, they did not inflict enough um, casualties, so yeah, uh, uh, tactical victory, but in my opinion it's it's fine. Yeah, we lost one Pershing tank, that's fucking annoying. 13 men killed, 19 men wounded, they uh, suffered uh, 65 men killed, 55 men wounded, 8 men missing, 5 tanks and 1 uh, Hanumak. And, well, they didn't, okay, they didn't have any armor left really, so that's odd. Well, I guess this crew, it's one commander, but surely that's not it, right? Yeah, okay, sure, the crews are still up, fair enough. Okay, there's a Begleitgrenadier Platoon HQ, which is <laughs> like a ton of guys with, uh, with assault rifles. I guess I could have hunted these down. Oh, okay, there was still one guy in there. Um, again, yeah, the, the crews were still there, so because of that we um, didn't get the... No, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, they had tanks on the other side of the river. Okay, I, uh, to be honest, I didn't see that coming. I thought this was for flavor. Okay, so they had one Panzer 4J left. Ah, uh, okay, if I had taken those out, but I, I hadn't seen those. And they w hadn't been spotted from the uh, Cathedral Tower either, because it wasn't high enough, probably. Or because of the rain. And, um, yeah, Panzer 4 along. Okay, yeah, I could have taken these out, but I didn't know they were there. So yeah, that's a bit of a disappointment in the end. I guess I could have cleared that, that rest, but I have the objective, so fair enough. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's end the campaign then, shall we? Total victory, okay. I'll take that. A bridge over the Rhine has been secured. Well, what's left of it? Your tireless pursuit of the enemy into the heart of Germany has nearly brought the end of the war to a victorious end. Oh, that's not that's not the best sentence ever written, okay. Um, not really James Hemingway here. Um, we lost 12 tanks, they lost 17 tanks, that's nice. 199 men wounded, they lost 562. And we lost 163 men killed, and they lost one 908 men killed. 87 men missing, we did not lose anybody missing. That's good. Two other vehicles for both. Okay. Um, yeah, that was the campaign. I will also today, I think, upload... No, wait, you know what? I'm just going to put that in here. It's going to be a longer video, but who cares. Um, a review. First of all, the campaign. It's okay. Uh, I think the best point of comparison would be the Russian campaign from Fire and Rubble, which I also played under the name Band of Comrades 2. Um, I think they were very similar in length too. I think they were... I would have to check, but I think I was at like 38 or 39 videos for the Russian campaign and uh, similar for this one. And they were both kind of... Um, Sherman heavy uh, mechanized or um, armored campaigns and obviously end of the war so if I compare the two I would say this one is the weaker one it's not bad but it has a lot of things in it that that are kind of meh a lot of scenarios that are just okay or kind of forgettable that feel like filler 
it does get a bit samey. You know, in the end it did pick up a bit with uh, uh, urban combat, but, you know, even in the beginning there was quite a bit of urban or at least, like, uh, village combat. And it, it does, uh, in terms of the forces that you face, it gets kind of samey. And this was the big advantage of the Russian campaign, because it spent a longer time span. You had a lot more different scenario types, you had a lot more different weather and um, kind of terrain types, because you started in Poland, you went into Berlin. Um, so it, it kind of kept my um, my attention longer and my interest longer. Um, and uh, if I think back on that campaign, there's no scenario that annoyed me quite as much as, for example, that um, that one with the weird autobahn scenario, which was both kind of weird from a historical or mapping perspective, and the pacing was completely off, so that was kind of a dud. And there were others that were just kind of meh. Now, there were also highlights. I would say the end was kind of a highlight, but even then it was kind of marred by, for one thing, the ending uh, just now, but also the weird <laughs> cathedral. <laughs> like, I mean, make a custom object for something like that. It can't be that hard. I mean, a bit, a little bit of pizzazz um, would be nice, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of meh, as I said. Now, there are some positives. Uh, almost no minefield. <laughs> Those are always annoying in this game. Um, there w were no bridge bugs. That's good. Apparently they tested for that. But, uh, yeah. Overall, I guess uh, the point of the campaign was really showcasing the uh, Pershing tanks, and it certainly did that. And it was uh, kind of uh, cool using those, so that's a positive. But yeah, uh, I would say 6 out of 10. So, um, with the campaign reviewed, Let's review the actual module, the downfall module. Not a huge fan. Again, it's not that it, that the content that it's, uh, is in there is bad, although um, some people have said uh, that um, there are some TOE problems. Uh, I will talk about that a bit later. It's just that I feel like the whole it, it doesn't really give you enough new things. Now, again, let's compare it to the most comparable um, module, which is the, the Fire and Rubble module, which is, in the community, I would say, regarded as probably like the best general module and a huge upgrade on uh, Red Thunder, right? So what made that one special? Uh, what was the one big kind of thing that made you go, oh, that's cool? Because at the end of the day, these uh, up to 1945 modules, in terms of vehicles and weapons, they didn't add that much cool stuff, right? Obviously, for historical reasons, there's only so much you can do. You already had King Tigers in the uh, base game, you can, you already had Jagd Tigers in um, Final Blitzkrieg. There's always the uh, like this idea, okay, here and there we can add some, there's new, um, like, as new Sherman variants, or for the, the Russians, oh, you now you have the SU-100 and not just the SU-85, but that's not something that gets you excited. So what was what was it that kind of made uh, the fire and rubble module? Um, I would say two things. Uh, first of all, the land and lease stuff for the Soviets, that was pretty new, but at the same time, except I guess for the Valentines, those were Sherman tanks, we had that in many different games already. It's not that that amazing. What was really amazing was the Volkssturm, right? Th that was completely new. They were very well executed and in my opinion tons of attention to detail, lots of like different um, uniform options and so on. That was, I saw that and I thought, yeah, that's cool. That module is cool, right? That was a big new thing about it, you know? So, so what's the cool big new thing for the downfall module? Kind of the Volkssturm again, right? I mean, that's, th th but that's not new anymore. They just ported that over. And I would also say, from what I've seen so far, in my opinion, for a Western Front game, they kind of lean too much on that. Uh, on the Eastern Front, it makes sense because there the Volkssturm actually fought you know, for um, due to anti-communism and fear of the Russian atrocities and so on. Makes sense. I feel like 
and this is also something I would um, hold against this campaign. Here on the Western Front, it's not that fitting. I mean, 90% of the time, they just surrendered, you know? And so because of that, it, it falls kind of flat. So you might ask, okay, so what should they have done then for the big thing? And to be honest, if you had asked me before this came out, what will be in the module, I would have been sure it would be all about river crossings, right? Rhine River crossing, the Scheldt, you know, uh, with the Canadians and so on. And I was sure there would be LVTs and uh, new Hobart funnies. Um, I thought there would be like Rangers. Okay, th those were already in Fortress Italy as well. I thought there would be commandos, maybe Royal Marine Com commandos, that kind of thing. I was sure there would be a Obviously, the Pershings and so on would be in there too, but I sh was sure there would be a campaign either about the Rhine crossing or um, the fighting in the Scheldt, showcasing all that cool new amphibious stuff. Maybe you would have stuff like um, new objects from for the level designers, like foot bridges and you know uh, pontoon bridges. There's so much stuff you could do, but um, I guess they made the Remagen Bridge, fair enough, but yeah, it's uh, to me that's a huge uh, missed opportunity because that would be something new. Obviously in the modern games there is amphibious stuff, but for the World War II games that would be something completely new, something to get people excited. So the thing in this to get people excited were basically like the Pershing and the Comet, then there was some minor stuff, but like 90% of the new content is ported over from other game families. So it's not something, and I'm not saying, you know, leave the Volkssturm out of the Western Front game. No, port it over, but it's not the new thing anymore. You shouldn't make every uh, second scenario about that, especially on, on the Western Front. Instead, every second scenario should have been about Rangers landing uh, on the other side of the Rhine, you know, on the other bank of the Rhine. That, that would have been cool. Um, and yeah, and even then, if you're gonna say we're not doing that, but we just add new vehicles and, uh, you know, single new stuff, there are so many things for a late war Western Front game, cool kind of uh, historical oddities and so on that I could think of to add, but they didn't, you know, just, you know, from the top of my head, I will list some things. Um, the beginning of this campaign, you fought in the in the Duren belt, right? Like at the at uh, Elsdorf and so on. Um, these were often fortified with improvised German guns, like stuff like um, Jagdpanther or King Tiger guns from the factories that they couldn't fit to a tank because they didn't have the materials, so they emplaced them, right? Why not add something like that? That could be cool. That could be unique. Would fit with the Volkssturm even. Um, or um, other things like uh, the Americans started to um, modify M1 carbines to be fully automatic. Does that make a huge difference? No. But why not put that in as like a rare thing that can happen? You know, just, you know, add, add these things to make it feel different, to make it feel fresh if you're, you know, going down that road and not adding like uh, commandos and stuff. Uh, you could have added, um, like, there's a scenario with Kriegsmarine troops at Rethem, and um, I remember they actually used that um, PAW 600 anti-tank gun that they had at the end of the war that was kind of a bit like a mix between an anti-tank gun and a mortar. Why not add that? You know, why not throw it in? Uh, throw in a Sherman Tulip to, you know, where they shot like these Typhoon rockets from the from the Sherman, stuff like that cool stuff but uh, instead they ported everything over we already knew and added a few single new vehicles and weapons you know uh, and uh, apparently that's what I wanted to mention I mentioned that earlier but that's what I also wanted to mention apparently the British TOE isn't even ported properly like it's wrong or something I don't know I, I don't know how the British work uh, somebody mentioned that on discord um, apparently uh, not everything from road to victory was ported over properly so yeah and yeah, as I said, so to me, big disappointment, big missed opportunity, this whole uh, module. It's not horrible, like the content itself. I had fun with this campaign, but compared to others that have come before, especially the Fire and Rubble uh, module, big letdown. Anyway, uh, hope you are still watching. I <laughs> hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.